Hey everyone, Erin from The Impatient Gardener and welcome to what I guess is late summer. Um, I don't remember midsummer, so I'm not sure where that went to. I remember early summer, but now I feel like the garden is starting to show these signs of easing into what I would consider to be late summer. Um, I'm not thrilled about that development, by the way, but it is a good time to sort of uh, take a look at what's good in the garden and what's bad in the garden. And I thought today we'd take a close look at the circle garden as well as a change that I want to make to the window box today. So first I wanna just give you a little bit of history on the Circle Garden. So when we bought this house, this was a rectangular, weedy, former vegetable garden that was clearly hadn't been used for a long time. And so at some point, and I think I might've actually blogged about this early on, like one of the first years, maybe. I think I might be able to go back in the blog and figure out exactly what year it was that I turned this into the Circle Garden, which is really an oval. And at the time my intention was to make this part vegetable garden and part ornamental garden and I made these kind of wavy paths and it was tomatoes and I think I grew tomatoes in the same spot in this garden for three years in a row and then we started having some problems because I kept planting tomatoes in that same spot uh, which is when I started moving into the original raised bed garden uh, across where now the new raised bed garden is. So this is sort of one of those areas that's certainly evolved over time here. And then it was, again, I'm going to have to look up the dates, that I changed the design of this garden. Let's say, for I'll put it up on the screen, but for argument's sake, I'm going to say this was five or six years ago. And I straightened out the paths, created this, the, you know, a, uh, more defined area and the idea with this garden was that this was to be an experimental place a place where I play with plant combinations and it provides a lot of impact and uh, with a formal framework but sort of informal planting on the inside and of course this is where I have my chive hedge which I've talked about all kinds of times before now the idea which each of these things I broke this into quadrants the idea is that each quadrant over here they're already looking great they're already planted in one thing and that's more or less what I've been doing although in some cases I've been doing sort of plant combinations but now I'm starting to rethink this and I think I'm going to approach this differently next year this first segment I always grow rhubarb here I think rhubarb is not only a wonderful edible to have around, I also think it's a beautiful ornamental plant. And yes, getting towards the end of summer here, it starts to wane a little bit, but I'm happy to pick off those yellow leaves and I'm happy with what's here, even at this time of year, because it's such a good show the rest of the year. Plus, I just love having a good supply of rhubarb. Next to that, over here, we have roses. And we talked about this earlier this year when we planted a rose. Uh, we only have one blooming right now. This is uh, Onwick Rose. It's a David Austin Rose. They're beautiful. Um, and then I added a Ringo, a pink Ringo Rose. Uh, we planted that in the rose video this year. And it's been blooming really well. I just don't feel... To me, first change I'm thinking about is I still think I might remove the roses here. I don't feel like this is enough year-long impact for an area that's really front and center in the garden. This year I planted the whole front of this with a variety of pink wave petunias which have gone through moments of looking good and looking bad. So I have a tough time growing petunias in the ground because I don't like to use synthetic fertilizers in soil. I don't mind it in containers, but I don't like to use it in the ground. And you know, petunias really like that chelated iron. They like those, they like a lot of fertilizer. And so I think they suffer a little bit over time because I'm not giving what I would be giving to them if they were in containers. I've got some lovely ones growing in containers. So that's just my thought on growing these here for the way that I garden. Over here we've got um, pink. This is Melody Pink Allegro Dahlia. Uh, maybe one of my favorite new dahlias that I'm growing this year. It's really beautiful. I have it in the big box too. Um, it's short. It gets these beautiful blooms. Then I've got what was supposed to be this sunbini. This is a Santalini. The creeping zinnia is the common name for it. Growing in the front, but I lost one right there, which is unfortunate. Love this plant. I just had a little bit of hard time getting it going this year because as you can see, I lost one right there. Beyond that combination that I adore. This is Unplugged So Blue Salvia 
with lemon coral sedum. And now that I look at this area, I think this whole thing would be better if it was only planted in that sedum and that unplugged so blue. Um, it's not that big of a segment and I just think it looks so good. I'm um, also in here, we have a few of these. Uh, this is this is Jewels of Opar and uh, I grew these last year. They reseed readily. So I actually have dug most of these up and moved them somewhere else in the garden, but these few continued to pop up and I left them there. It's a great plant, great reseeder. If you plant it once, you probably won't have to plant it again. Very easy to weed out if you don't want it and easy to move around, although it comes up very, very late. So it's a, it's a late show. Probably the segment that's looking the best over here is the one with the Bobo hydrangeas, which have just really like fully flowered now. Uh, there are in this area five or six plants. So this is not one, this is many all packed together. Bobos are great for just covering with flowers. So um, love that, big success there as far as I'm concerned. Down here, we've got a combination of purple and orange sun patients. These have just started touching recently. So I guess in the future, if I were gonna mass plant sun patients like that, I would plant a lot more of them closer um, so that they would fill in a little quicker. Over here, Wicked Witch Coleus with white sun patients. But um, you can see that the Wicked Witch Coleus is kind of um, out competing the white sun patients. These are all compact sun patients, so if you can find the ones that are labeled vigorous, perhaps better for a combination like this. And I would absolutely repeat this combination. I just would do it with the vigorous ones if I could find them. And now we've got this sad corner. I've just cut back the lady, I always grow ladies mantle in this area. I just cut it back and as you can see, I cut it back fully to the ground. And you can see it's starting to come back nicely, but obviously this area doesn't look great in the meantime. In the front, I planted this uh, perfume purple Nicotiana. Beautiful, but not enough of it, and it's all flopping. And over here, I did HS Date Dahlias, which are just starting to flower. Here's a beautiful flower right here. And there's a beautiful flower that is definitely not HS Date. It's something else. I must have gotten something mixed up in my labels. Here in the center we have uh, just a variety of clematis growing up the middle, at least three different ones, and just the chive hedge going around and then some euphorbia around it. So in my opinion I think there's a lot to love about what's happening in this circle garden and I still like this idea of sort of a formal layout with an informal planting and playing around with combinations. I just think that after several years of doing it this way, maybe I'm feeling a little bit like a change, but maybe the concept has not worked as well as I had originally planned because I think those segments become too small. So my thought for next year is that uh, the two smaller segments on the sides of the oval, I'm gonna make those one and just do a mass planting of one thing there. I'm gonna take that lady's mantle out, move that somewhere else in the garden. And the two ends, which tend to be longer, I think I'm definitely keeping the bobos. I love the bobos there, but I'm starting to think that maybe another grouping of small shrubs on the other side of that, where I have that coleus, might be interesting. And then continue to plant that front area with an annual or annual combination. And then where the roses and the rhubarb are, the rhubarb stays. I'm committed to the rhubarb here. Uh, the roses I am not committed to. So again, I think if I was gonna change those out, I would change those out for something that is either perennial or a shrub and then plant that area full in the middle. So I think in terms of the evolution of this garden, this is a situation where um, I've just realized that it's not working for me anymore. I just am not happy and I'm and I'm happy that I committed to that experiment for a number of years and now it's time to just slightly change it up a little bit. So that's the circle garden. Now I want to show you the window box and the circle garden is going to come into play actually with that too. So I think you can see the bottom of the window box behind me here. Um, this is the time of year when containers get really overgrown, right? I mean, I, uh, don't be surprised if your containers look like they peaked a few weeks ago and now they've gone a little bit a little bit crazy. Uh, and that's what happened with my window box. I actually was in there 
a week or two ago and I did a little bit of maintenance to it. Um, so I'm gonna take you up on the ladder and show you what I did to it so you can know. But first I wanna talk to you about this border in front of it. So I did talk to you about how I planted this border in a previous video. And I mentioned then that this had the feeling to me that this might be my favorite way that I've planted this border. And I think I'm gonna go on record and say that it is. I'm so happy with the front of this border. So the back of this border is always my tall dahlias. So here we've got, there's a, just a few starting to bloom here. We've got um, Penn Hill Dark Monarch. This is Penn Hill Watermelon just starting to open here. Um, hard to get an idea of the color on it, sort of hiding in there. We've got Climbing Roses and Clematis. This one is called, which is still blooming, is called Sea Breeze. It's really a, a pretty kind of um, cornflower, light lavender blue um, clematis. This is Autumn Sunset Rose, Climbing Rose. And over here is Rise Up Amberness. We saw me plant that this year, um, which is just starting to come into flower again. And then we have more dahlias across the back here. But along the front here, in this front layer, I was very cognizant to try to keep this simple because there is so much going on behind it and to come up with a cohesive color scheme to what's happening in the window box up there. So again, the plants that I used here are pretty simple. Um, you can't see a lot of them because they're starting to grow up, but, but this was a really important plant in this. This is Carex toffee, uh, toffee Twist. Um, which is, like I said, starting to get a little bit overgrown, but you can still see peaks of it, and I'm happy about that. This is Nicotiana Perfume Lime, grown from seed. That's the only thing in here that was grown from seed, everything else. Oh, and there's some Ageratum that I think actually self-seeded in here. So uh, we left that, it's, not, it's just starting to bloom. Again, we have Unplugged So Blue Salvia, my absolute favorite. It's just such a good performer, and so I do have it almost everywhere this year. Uh, we've got Compact Orchid Sun Patience, two of these. This is two plants put together. We've got a little bit of the Angelonia in here, bring in the white. So I think you can see the repetition we have going here. Um, and the color scheme, which I think works with all the other colors. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, this is a total win for me. I'm really, really happy with how this turned out this year. Up here on the ladder, this is how the window box is looking. So just to review what's in here, the tall vines growing corner, which by the way, absolutely primo, love them up there. That is Acerina um, Joan, Joan Lorraine, I believe. It's perfect as far as I'm concerned. I love the look of the vines going up. I always think it adds height to the window box without further obscuring the window, which is always an issue. Again, unplugged so blue in the back. Uh, Toffee Twist Carex in the front. Some of that perfume lime Nicotiana. We've got uh, this red leafed sweet potato vine, which maybe could use a touch of pruning. And then the purple in the front here is, I believe it's super blue, super vena. You're just seeing little hints of it now, and that's because I cut it back quite a bit uh, a week ago, and it has got nice big buds on it, so it's gonna start flowering again. And it was spectacular, but it was just getting a little big, so I just cut it back just a touch, which is great. The plant looks great, it's gonna refresh. So just pretend like there's more blue that you see in the middle. But I think you're not, if you're looking at this, you might notice what I noticed, which is that to me, this window box is missing white. Now I did have uh, the trailing Angelonia planted in here. It got, comp that Superbina just ate it up. Now I have stuck my hand in there to see if there's any available room, even in the soil to stick another plant in there. And there's like a small little bit. So I'm gonna actually go steal some plants from the circle garden, which I think we've already um, ascertained as a um, bit of a bit of a wash this year. I'm sort of calling it like that one is what it is. So we're gonna go snag some plants from there, and I'm gonna put them in here. A total experiment. It can't. It, the worst thing that happens is the plants die. So what do you lose from that? You're down a couple of plants. That's it. 
So let's give it a shot. Okay, we are gonna go in here and grab some of this Euphorbia. Now, I had a big issue this year with a lot of the Euphorbia I was buying being mislabeled. I bought these all as Diamond Frost, but this is definitely Diamond Snow. You can tell that's Diamond Frost. This is Diamond Snow, uh, which has kind of a double flower on it. I like them both, it doesn't matter to me. This is a Diamond Snow again. So I believe this is Diamond Snow and that's Diamond Frost. It doesn't really matter to me, um, but I'm gonna dig up two of these. So it's very hard to show you what I've done, but I've just kind of gone in there with my hand and dug a hole. As you might imagine, this window box is chock full of roots by this time of year, but I think I was able to get a fairly good hole kind of back here. By the way, you can see here's the little tie that I did on the Carex. Okay, now I'm gonna try to sneak that sucker in there. Okay, they're both in, but crucial to this is getting some water in there immediately. Now this box is on a uh, drip, just running up from the drip below. There is a white uh, quarter inch feed line that just runs up the house and obviously you can't really see it to begin with. And then once the dahlias fill in, you really can't see it. Okay, let's take a look at the after. If this works and if those live, to me that is 100% better. I think that looks, just that little hint of white in there looks so much better. Now if it were up to me, I would have bought a white flowering annual with a little bit more heft than that Euphorbia has to really get some white in there. In fact, that um, Weeping Angelonia would have been perfect if it had stood up to the vigor of the other plants that were in there. But no one's selling annuals right now. I tried, there's no one online, there's certainly no one in person who is selling annuals anymore. So uh, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? So time will tell if this works, if those annuals actually thrive and can make it through this transition. It's not exactly a great time to be ripping annuals out of the ground and moving them into a planter that's already full of roots. But uh, I think you can tell it's not sunny it's very cool here we actually have a very moderately warm to cool week ahead of us so it's not like any we've got no heat coming up so there's a chance this could work and like i said i have nothing to lose right i took these both out of the back of the um in the center of the circle garden but in the back behind the trellis that's there so when you're standing here at the front of the house you don't even see that anything's missing the rest will probably fill in and if they don't oh that's okay too whatever so here we go that's what i'm trying let me know in the comments if you think it's going to work or not all right so that's just a little moment in my garden some thoughts for next year i hope you're having a great day in your garden and we'll see you soon thank you for watching